think we can start, right? Okay, our uh, last session today is uh, by Dave Neary, and it's about the complete open source cloud. Is that right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, so hello everybody, this is not going to be an in-depth technical presentation, let me warn you about that. And uh, thanks to Diane, I don't have to talk too much about OpenShift. Uh, so, uh, but the idea here is just to give you an overview of all of the elements that go into an open source uh, cloud data center solution and, and, and how you can do all of those, those things in open source and how they can work together. Uh, okay, so we're going to have a look at what I put up here is traditional virtualization. Some people, if they were being cheeky, would say legacy virtualization. In a cloud world, the move to infrastructure as a service and the way things have changed with that move and, uh, and, and how storage fits into that story and, and, and how, we, um, how we can enrich that and make, make maybe moving to the cloud a little bit easier by adding a pass layer and then the importance of cloud monitoring at the end. Okay, so um, virtualization is a, going back 10 years. Um, you installed an operating system on a computer and then all of a sudden VMware came along and you could install multiple operating systems on the same computer and all of a sudden instead of having one server that ran 25 applications and was 99% full all the time with the disk and the processor was running at 97% and the load was like 3.5 all the time, you could, oh, you could spread it out across a number of servers, you could move services from one host to another, balance your workloads and virtualization was awesome. It brought a certain flexibility uh, consolidation of your hardware, you had fewer, bigger servers, so you weren't, you, you, it was made, made things easier to manage because you, you, one VM was doing one thing. Um, and it helped you protect your applications, brought in concepts of high availability, being able to cluster, uh, cluster VMs so that if one went down, well, you didn't matter, your application kept going. Um, and it gave you the ability to scale up. So if you had a, an, an application that needed a bigger VM, needed more memory, well, you just gave it more memory, you gave it more disk, and, and, and everything kind of worked. So, so this was, uh, was awesome, and it's good. So, and the important thing here is that there's no need in, an, in a traditional virtualization application to change your legacy applications, right? The disk is included in the VM. The, um, the application that runs on bare metal is probably going to run just without any changes on your, in your virtualization there. And you can do, there are a number of ways you can do open source virtualization uh, like this. Um, one that I'm involved in is Overt, uh, which is a KVM management application. So it manages clusters of KVM, um, hosts running KVM. Um, it's kind of an open source alternative to vSphere. Zen has something similar in Z, with Zen Server, which is, I believe, a commercial offering, but uh, the Zen hypervisor is open source. Uh, maybe I'm wrong on that. Can somebody correct me if I'm wrong? Am I wrong? Okay, I would assume I'm not. Gennetti is another one that was presented earlier. So this is one that, a project that's come out of Google, very much optimized for the command line. So there's a, a, a kind of a, a rich command line API. And again, it manages clusters of, of KVM or, or Zen nodes. So these are all kind of, and plus there are single host um, solutions, but these are the ones that kind of manage multiple, multiple hosts, which is the kind of thing that you want to do in a data center. Um, for single hosts, you've got Proxmox or Kimchi or Vert Manager. Uh, and all those work quite well. So we've got a lot of open source solutions there for the traditional virtualization. Now, things changed a few years ago when Amazon came out with uh, EC2, and we've seen a massive move towards infrastructure as a service. And some of the things that, that massively changed are you didn't have to go through um, a system administrator anymore. If you wanted to get a VM in deployment, you just went onto the self-service portal, you create your, your VM, your instance. Um, the, the main thing about when, when, you, change, when you move to, to infrastructure services, I'm going to, this is the next slide, it's pets versus cattle. You know, every, everybody here has probably heard that 10,000 times. Uh, but the main move is, is that rather than scaling up your application and throwing more memory and throwing more disk at it, you say, well, let's, let's create high availability cluster. And, uh, and create many identical servers, and if one goes down, well, we don't care, we, we just spin up another one. Um, and that kind of way of many identical servers um, provisioned on the fly is, is, is what brought it this kind of movement to configuration management, which we're seeing exploding now. The config management room here this week has been, uh, I think, constantly full with a huge queue outside. Um, and I think the move to infrastructure as a service is really what kicked off the interest in configuration management, because configuration management's been around since, what, 92, I think, CF Engine started? So it's been around for ages. Anyway, it gives you the ability to scale out. So uh, uh, when your application goes up in demand, well, you add more servers. When it comes back down, you scale it back down. Um, 
it provides loads of services so you can load balance. You don't have to worry about load balancing. You just sort of say, okay, I want an elastic IP and a, and a load balancing group and it's done, right? Um, and you can, this, the, the th key thing here is where before you didn't have to change your, your legacy applications. Here we're moving to object storage and stateless VMs. And the statelessness is really what's important. Um, so what does a stateless VM mean, right? So, so in the old world, vert, vert world, you know, your VMs are like pets, right? You give them names and you take care of them when they get sick. And in the new world, uh, your VMs are more like cattle or sheep or, or chickens, right? If one dies, well, that's a shame. Uh, you get another one. Um, and so, so you're still attached to your chickens, right? They're, they're important. I, I, I'm deliberately avoiding cattle because some people have... Uh, previously taken offenses. Anyway, you get it. You know, you get attached to your chickens. It's it's they're they're things that are important to you. But you know, at the end of the day, they're kind of commodity and replaceable. Uh, but the th key thing here is that they're they're stateless. Now, what stateless means is that you don't put any application knowledge in your VM, so you don't have any storage in your VM. Or if if, if you're doing it properly, you're running off ephemeral storage. And that means that when you reboot or when you spin up another one, all your data, if you've been storing data in your VM, is gone away. And that's why the object storage layer or uh, the block, shared block storage uh, comes, into, comes into question. Anyway, so one open stack, one open stack, one open source uh, infrastructure as a service solution is open stack, provides all the stuff that I've talked about, compute service, the dashboard to self-service provisioning, um, image service so that you, you upload your templates and you boot your, your multiple VMs off that object store so that you can do your object storage. It does have the volume set, the, the, a volume service, so uh, like EBS in, in Amazon, uh, you know, you've got your block store where you can just attach a block, uh, a block store to um, an image and it gives you a new block device and you can create a file system on it and do all that kind of stuff, but you can't share them among multiple VMs, so you can't use it in, for example, a high HA proxy pool. Um, it's a modular architecture, easy to scale out. Uh, and it's got a bunch of new stuff that's coming along. One of the new services that's kind of interesting to me is Manila, which is uh, going beyond uh, sharing um, block storage or object storage. It's a file system, right? So you, you have a file system which you can mount and make available on your, all your VMs. It's also got database as a service, firewall as a service, DNS as a service, all this kind of stuff is coming along. Uh, Cloud Stack is another one. I'd better mention that. Um, which can be used, which is infrastructure as a service, which provides many of the same things. So one of the key things in infrastructure as a service is that your, service, your servers are kind of, you know, you sort of take off the shelf commodity hardware um, and you just carve them up, right? So you've got your big instance might be half of a server, uh, so you'll get maybe 16 cores out of 32. Um, and you, these, these servers are just numbers, right? It's just racks of servers in a data center. and, and, and you, uh, you cut them up in, in ways which, which, which allows you to optimize the usage of the space over time. Uh, but most of the time in infrastructure service, I think most of your servers probably, probably lie in idle. Uh, so this is the, the idea of the instance type and reducing the choice that you have as a user is, is kind of one of the things that's important there. But then again, you don't need it most of the time. Okay, so a sample cloud application kind of looks like this. Uh, typically, so something like a web application, you've got your, your requests come into a, 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 stat, a static IP that's allocated to your pool. That's what you're going to put in your DNS. Um, you do HA proxy across your, your web servers. Um, maybe you've got a reverse proxy cache in there, something like Squid or, 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 or Varnish in front of it. Um, then you're going to have another load balancer, load balancing across your application servers. And then you're going to replicate your database and, and make sure that your, your database is probably going to end up being, if you, if you manage to get your, so the first, <laughs> coherent thought, how, how much time? Jesus, I'm flying. Um, the first pain point you're going to hit when you move to the cloud is the storage, right? You're going to treat your instance like it's, a, like it's a normal VM. And then you're going to reboot, or you're going to spin up another one, and you're going to have lost any data that you've got in there. So you say, okay, better not do that anymore. So you'll, you'd maybe a database as a service, so you'll start to provision, uh, uh, provision your databases differently. Uh, you'll move your storage to object storage, and that's kind of cool. Um, or, which you'll, typically the first thing you'll do is you'll say, well, I can boot off a volume, and then it's okay. It's just like a VM, and it is, except then you can't scale out. So then you have to figure out how to get your, your data off a of volume and avoid having the special snowflake and get it onto object store. Anyway, then when you get to this, this is, your database is probably going to end up being the, the, the pain point, right? Isn't it? I'm not feeling the pain here. Um, anyway, 
So this is this is. Kind of, Storage is the pain rather than database specifically is the feedback I get from the front. Um, good point. And we're getting to that. So that your sample, sample cloud application is stateless. It's, it's important I mentioned that. Persistent storage requires block storage or object storage service. You can read as well as I can. Okay, next. Storage is kind of important. Um, so clouds need scale out storage. And uh, clouds use storage in lots of different ways. I'm not going to read here, but um, cloud you use storage in lots of different ways. You know, so, so an image stores, you've got big blobs there, and you've got a lot of reading, but not so much writing. Um, uh, on uh, storage that's going to be behind something like Nova, a compute service where you've got VMs running it, um, you're going to have a lot of I.O. going on, and that maybe is not going to be so good for some solutions. There are a bunch of uh, open source uh, storage solutions out there. Ceph is one that's very popular uh, at the moment. React CS is getting a lot of... Um, a lot of good press at the moment. Uh, I don't know much about it, to be quite honest. GlusterFS is the one that uh, Red Hat is uh, backing. And GlusterFS is actually great for things like image storage, shared file system. Not so great for running your VMs on uh, performance issues. Um, and Swift is the object store which comes with, uh, with OpenStack. Uh, so Swift is it, it's an eventually consistent data store which uh, you store your object there. It creates three copies of it on three different servers. And, uh, and you know that at some point, things are going to be OK. And that's fine for most use cases, I guess. Um, OK. So scale out storage, uh, Gluster, this is Gluster Bricks. Uh, Ceph does something different. It's got something called a crush map. So it, it kind of stores a map of where all the data is and, and spreads it out. And you access it through uh, something called RB, RBD, the Rados block device. Uh, RBD is Rados block device, right? I'm looking at the front row. You seem to know what you were talking about earlier. <laughs> so now you're my reference, right? You're, you're my <laughs> uh, okay, so storage is very important, and we have multiple uh, solutions. Uh, potentially, you, I, I think you could potentially mix Ceph and, uh, and Gluster for different use cases. I would be tempted to use Gluster. For example, if you're using OpenStack, I'd be tempted to use Gluster for um, your Glance storage for uh, something like Manila and... Uh, probably use Ceph behind Cinder. I don't know if that makes sense. Mark, does that make sense? Yeah. Gluster is getting there, he says. Uh, OK, so where does Pass fit into that? Well, as I said, you know, you've got a scale-out web application. Uh, you've got stateless VMs. You've got to figure out how to do HA proxy. If you're a web developer, you don't, mostly don't care about that stuff. Um, at least, you know, I didn't. And. Um, and so passes, the idea here is that it takes a lot of the pain out of it. It's by moving the load of scaling out your application, managing, uh, managing its uh, auto-scaling when, when, you, when you get peaks in, uh, in request, um, making sure that you know, everything keeps ticking along. Um, the, the pass layer kind of takes all of the pain out of, out of doing cloud development, which is kind of the, the way it's... Uh, well, Diane said it better than I could. Uh, one way is it's kind of industrializing in the, in the way that infrastructure as a service industrializes the provisioning of hardware. So you've got instance types, you reduce the choice. Um, pass is kind of in, industrializing the, 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 the deployment of cloud applications so that when you're deploying a cloud application on infrastructure as a service, it's not its own special thing that's kind of uh, needs, you need to train somebody in how to maintain this thing. No, it's, it's kind of, you know, you just concentrate on the important bits, the differentiation, the code. Right? And, uh, and, and the platform service takes care of all the rest. Um, I'm going to skip all this. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a question of control, right? So with the, with the kind of traditional virtualization, you've got control over everything from hardware through to your application. Infrastructure as a service takes, kind of, takes the hardware off the table, and you control just the operating system, uh, the application platform, and the application platform as a service. You just think about your application. You don't care about how it's running. Uh, in fact, it's running usually in, uh, in a container. Um, and software as a service, uh, basically you lose your control. Anyway, okay. Eh. Uh, OpenStack is, a, is, a, is one pass. Cloud Foundry is another op popular open source one, uh, which is based on Ubuntu. And Docker is a very cool container format. And I am out of time, so I'm going to keep flying through. Orchestration, very important. Um, how you get your application scaling across multiple, multiple applications is vital. Uh, there are multiple uh, orchestration options there. Um, yeah. 
Uh, okay. When you're moving to a cloud, you've got things, you're going to have your things in your infrastructure as a service, you're going to have your, your, your applications in your platform as a service, maybe you're going to have some applications in, in, uh, in, in traditional virtualization, and uh, maybe you're going to have multiple clouds, maybe a private cloud and a public cloud. And, and one of the things that's very important here is that, you know, we want to use all of these in different circumstances, and you want to have some kind of vision, view of what's going on uh, across your entire data center. Right, so, so in this world where we're kind of mixing and matching different storage solutions, different virtualization solutions, different infrastructure as a service solutions, um, getting some kind of a view of what's going on there is very important. So I think, you know, the next stage that we're going to see for um, the next stage that we're going to see for uh, the next frontier for open source is, is around cloud management software. Uh, you've got a number of kind of young. Uh, cloud management layers that are there, but it, really what you have right now is every, every, every different piece of infrastructure has its own management. And um, I'm going to call out CloudForms Management Engine, which we're in the process of open sourcing in Red Hat, and it's, uh, we're planning uh, an open source release for that in the coming months. Um, it's, so, so you're going to need something that enables policy and format and enables you to orchestrate your applications across multiple frameworks. So anyway, I think that's going to be important as well. So you start with all of these. Uh, some of these are working together. Blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, uh, same as uh, Diane said. Thank you. <laughs> Talk about good time management. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, I get some truffles. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any? Does anybody have any time for questions? Yeah, I'll take them here. Okay. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Slowly start.